I just want to say a few things before I go on. It's August 2022. Next week I'll be dealing with this eight years. So it was eight years ago when I walked away from that toxic Baha'i group. I'm aware we are all locally. I'm aware, as we all are locally, of the public effort in assisting to cover all this kind of mess up. No accountability can be implemented as certain high profile people are wrongly got involved believing in their own sense of entitlement, seizing the opportunities offered by influence or offering favouritism. When realising there was quite a lot of evidence starting to build up that supported what I was saying and they had acted wrongly and their career, their reputation and their jobs were now at risk, they decided to push through and kind of finish the job. I'll point out here, I did not make these people corrupt. These people were corrupt in the first place and if I left in the morning, they would remain corrupt. When I was realised what a major fuck up this was, they had no choice but to try and finish it and commit it to like completing the job, if I'm being honest with you. They engage an effort to destroy my character that condones their behaviour was put in place. This is a psychological tactic, divide and conquer, they call it. Basically, they use sexual slander that would isolate me from society and then they basically attack, and attack your mental health, gaslight your mental health in afterwards. It was looked at, it was only me and my family, so kind of I was fair game as opposed to these people who had jobs and pensions. All right, at the end of the day, they're all like corrupt and they shouldn't be in power in the first place and they should be called out. So many moral crusaders, corrupt beyond words, or much worse in some cases, hiding behind politicians and the Catholic Church. And the corrupt guard of who I lad, I get harassed by these guards like on a daily basis. They drive past my apartment and they turn on the sirens. Just for three or four seconds, just when they pass me a pound, this goes on like dozens of times a day, it doesn't really bother me, but I have it all recorded. It just gives an example of what the guard are really up to. And let's be honest, it's not the first time the Catholic Church has been swayed in political influence to cover up the wrong or the wrongdoings of people involved. And I'll get to that later on in other videos. Have a you have a certain person's family pulling every string imaginable to cover up his actions not to mention his brother's actions. And we all have to tip toward down this issue. Every couple of years is brought up and every couple of years is swept under the carpet. Like we all know what it is. The influence and the strings pulled to keep these people in their jobs as it will cause a domino effect of blame and undermine the whole system and highlight what really goes on in Waterford. The, action, the actions and issues I brought up in the past videos should be investigated. These professions, whether it's Tusla, Waterford Garda, politics, politicians, solicitors, Waterford Council, or people of the church in Waterford, these people are not exempt from being held accountable, and they shouldn't be exempt, and they should be held accountable. The mentality of we'll destroy his character and involve as many groups as we can, which will prevent it from being investigated. The realistic expectations of the system was ever going to side with me above these people was always unlikely. But as this go uh, but as this goes on, I don't intend to just simply give up. I have to exhaust all avenues before I can take it to the high course. But I will do that and it'll probably take me time, but I will do that in due course. But it moves further and further away from the root of the problem. I've spoken about Dr. Anne Carey who's an employee of water for Tussle and her actions and her husband's. And like they, they remain employed. Now I could be wrong, so they should prove me to be lying to at least cover the, the professional integrity of these people. But on the other side of that, like on the flip side of that, if I'm telling the truth, these people should be totally investigated and everyone around them that's covering up their actions should also be investigated. You have my ex who's doing the bidding for this Dr. Anne Carey as she's now kind of like high up in this Baha'i group. She's basically now been given a platform up in Dublin offering like free counseling with her haircuts. This is a glorified attempt to kind of like enlist people into this Baha'i shite, if I'm being honest with you. Like I've heard it first hand how it works and this is exactly all this is. All the destroying of my character and the social shunning, all of this was all premeditated. The people doing this, should, they should be made stand by what they're saying basically. Like, like, if it is what it is, stand by what you're saying. 
I'm speaking of people at the top, not about these clowns now, like in the middle of them, being honest, we all love the gossips and the whispers and the social media fucking crusaders. Not about the people at the very top, like these are the people that should be held accountable because these are the people that are in place to do this exactly again. So they should be held accountable and they should be used as an example throughout Ireland to show that the system actually does work and it doesn't cover up these kind of people. I've been speaking out now eight years about this. I speak about this to try and bring awareness and transparency as the transparency protects me from getting set up. Look at the lengths they've gone through so far. So like it's a, it's a real risk of being set up. So this is really why I do the whole transparent kind of thing. I don't expect to create some kind of following. So many people have been lured into this and they didn't have the sense to see it for what it is. I don't seek validation. It does bother me that some people involved in this are simply trying to hide in the crowd to hide their own actions. I wanted to address then my own family. Like I, I bit my lip for fucking years regarding certain members of my family there now and it's gotten to a stage now where I'm absolutely sick of it. Like I have a younger sister who we all know in 2021 at the assault she was the one driving. It was actually her I jumped in for and then you now she's had to pull it out and she wouldn't make a statement about the assault. It's just nothing but pure spoil. I fell out with her and my older brother out in Herbal and Parrock. And I won't go too much into detail but I will say this. My older brother is basically a fucking coward and I'm saying this now for everyone to hear like you went down and you shook hands with the very person that was like tormenting your mother on a daily basis for years and you hadn't the balls to stand up to me you went down and shook his hand days after your mother fucking passed it. many members of my family to blame me for bringing this extra stress onto me mother like and kind of partly that is true and something I kind of regret being honest with you but like at the end of the day they could have defended me mother you know what I mean? They could have stayed out of my situation and still defended me mother. They chose not to defend me mother, okay? And they can dress this up whatever way they want and pretend that it's all my fault and they were staying out of it and all this kind of stuff. They should have defended me mother in the story. Do you know what I mean? Like, my mother and father, like, I, was, I mean, I wanted the easiest to bring up and they always stood by me. They were extremely loyal. And they... Like, my brothers and sisters, if I've been honest with you, some of them had an issue with this. They thought I was the favourite. It's just because I was in more trouble and they were kind of like, they felt that they needed to be there for me. So obviously I got more attention. <clears throat> I was blamed for bringing this on my mother because she went through a couple of years of kind of fucking bullshit and trying to by a neighbour. And then uh, like very few people would stand up for me. Mother like, and I'd always stand up for me. Mother, she'd stand up for me. But um. My brother fucking went down and shook hands. In a couple of days after my mother passed, my older brother fucking went down and shook hands with the piece of shit that was harassing me, mother, on a daily basis for years. This was, and he hadn't the fucking balls to stand up to. And then it's the same shit with my sister, spiteful bitch that she is. Like, I jumped in for her in 2021 out there. And basically, then she pulls out making a statement because, like, we fell out fucking afterwards. But I'll give you another example now, and I want to talk about this. She was using the profile of of one of my aunties and she sent this horrible long ranted text to me wife but she forgot to switch profile so her name came up for the fucking a couple of minutes before she changed it back to me auntie i just want to talk actually about this auntie who she used as a profile because there was a reason why she used this uh auntie as a profile she's only an auntie by fucking blood like, I, like she's not into me she's a horrible fuck you know such a but uh, her name is rosie sullivan rosie johnson or whatever right? My wife got a wedding dress in 2019. She put it up online, up on Facebook, like, obviously happy. And she started getting trolled by these people. So eventually then I started ringing the people up, finding out who was behind the troll. So the same name kept coming back, Noel Johnson, Noel Johnson, Noel Johnson. Now this cunt is married to me auntie, Rosie Sullivan, who was my si mother's sister. So I obviously I rang, rang her up and I said, put him on the fucking phone, basically. But he wouldn't come on the phone. He decided to shout over his fucking wife's shoulder saying that it was only a joke and i needed to take a joke he was trolling me wife so obviously he wanted a fucking joke do you know what i mean but he hadn't the boss to come on the phone so to cut a long story short then uh fucking i don't really say it and just call him a fat for my gossips anyway but um a um, couple of minutes after this then i get a phone call then from a ex waterford hurler john milan with these fucking multi-green eyebrows and fucking asking me what i was saying to his buddy fucking old and all this kind of shit so i basically told him that First of all, he was trolling my wife. Second of all, it was none of his business. Keep his fucking nose out of my business. 
basically he was trying to lure me into saying something threatening I could fucking you could see where this was going kind of so I basically hung up on him like fucking well there was this auntie's profile on Facebook that my sister was after like fucking opening an account and using a photograph and using this then to abuse my wife but obviously forgot to ch switch the fucking profiles for a couple of minutes and fucking just show you how nasty she is but between me older brother down now and my younger sister there's a fucking pair of men I have fucking, there's another member in my family who was involved in the Legion of Mary, who is now the president as well, I believe, of the Legion of Mary, because of his actions to cover up the actions of Henry Halligan, as we all know what he did. I won't keep going on about it, but this fellow would be the best friends. They sit around playing guitar, fucking with each other. And um, as I said, I won't say too much because he is a fucking family member, and I know my mother won't want me to say too much, but I will say this. I know your fucking actions and I know what you've done and if you continue what you're doing I will fucking contact everyone in your family and I will explain to them with fucking proof what you did. And then even when my mother was sick like I had my brother's fucking two sons right full of drink one night half two three o'clock in the morning sending me fucking sending me threats sending me wife threats fucking saying that they're going to be waiting for me outside my mother's when my mother was sick basically the next day. Obviously then fucking with the cocaine and the fucking drink wore off and the ball shriveled up then they want the fucking sign of them. But these are the fucking nasty fucking snakes that I'm trying to fucking deal with on top of all the other shit like. So I've tiptoed around these kind of people for long enough and I'm fucking sick to death of them. My sister could have made the statement as I jumped in for her. She chose not to be honest about it. And as for me older brother, you're a fucking coward. You could have stood off your mother on multiple occasions but you hadn't the balls to you. would rather go out and speak to him out in that fucking... Honeywell or whatever the fuck he was working and then you had to fucking shake his hand days after the fucking your own mother passed away you fucking snake they will say that they don't agree with me like the way I've been bringing up me mother and what happened to me mother basically they want me to drop it if I'm being honest they don't want me bringing up what happened to me mother and stuff because fucking by me bringing it up it also shows how they don't fuck all to be honest with you like why wouldn't I bring this up Realistically, why you wonder bring and they'll say, Oh, it's disrespectful. I'll tell you what's disrespectful, not standing up for your parents. Do you know what I mean? I want an easy child to bring up, like, won't be parents are very loyal to me. So, fucking, like, I feel very kind of loyal to my parents. My mother was a very resilient woman, and of all the hassles she was getting out, trying to move on, she was, was on a daily basis, but like, all she would say to me is, she wouldn't give in and she wouldn't give in and that was put down to stubbornness by some of the members of my family like fucking I wasn't stubbornness she was just resilient and fucking like she liked right to stand up around but like certain members of my family like they had to put a fucking ball between them if I'm being honest with you and they would rather go and befriend the people that are actually harassing their fucking mother whatever about me I can understand like falling out with me and that's not a fucking issue do you know what I mean but my mother was good to fucking many of these fucking people do you know what I mean so it kind of gets me goat. So I've been kind of tiptoeing around these people for fucking eight years and I've had enough. I don't mean to disrespect my family's name or my mother's name, but I'd rather die than fucking give up. I'll give you another example of bullshit with me fucking older brother. He told me fucking, he told me mother that my uncle wanted to see me to fucking uh, assist me with moving fucking apartments and to give me money, give me loan money basically to move out. So I was sent up there. I am a doctor then and fucking I felt I was treated fucking kinda of very disrespectfully and fucking obviously me older brother as usual with his fucking lies that this was all bullshit then and fucking he had the cheek then to try and jump down my mother's throat because my mother was out to sending me up. Now I fucking I ended up attacking them my fucking uncle not attacking but I ended up verbally abused him fucking wrongly like because because I was so upset basically and fucking telling me it was wrong what I don't but this was all down to my older brother again and then he tried to say and even after all of this then he tried to say that my uncle was offering 2,000 euro on the condition if I took it that I was to never speak to my own mother again like that's how nasty my fucking older brother is and I'm sick to fucking dead to tiptoeing around him and his two degenerate fucking sons and my younger sister fuck the whole lot of Grow a pair of balls. You should have defended your fucking mother and you fucking didn't, okay? Fact. Don't be fucking blaming me for bringing fucking disrespect on the family because she had the fucking balls to fucking like, like, 
So she hadn't the balls to fucking defend her when she was alive and you won't defend her now when she's fucking dead. Like, fuck that. And if certain members of my family have an issue with this, they should come and see me. I could really go into some stuff here. and I mean really go into some stuff that they don't want me fucking talking about. But I won't bring it up because I know my mother will just say, John, leave him to God. So, like, unfortunately, I will let this fucking go. And you're lucky. But I will say this one last thing. My mother was quite religious. And she was religious for the right reasons. She was worth a hundred of that fucking hypocrite Henry Halligan at Ballybeg Church. I'm sick of tiptoeing around these cowards who have influence and pull. And because basically people won't fucking stand up to a man. It's been, it's been years of this shit. Like, and it's gone on and on and on. I intend to speak about some crazy stuff down now that's going to fucking come out. I will show Waterford Council's failure of, in duty of care and the total fuck up by Waterford Garda and their desperation to prevent an, an investigation into this. I rang a detective Thursday the 11th of August where I was informed my, my assault would be dropped. Basically as, I was predict, basically, as I predicted, it would be covered up, stating I waited too long. We all know I've been trying to report this since August 2021. Now this all happened in July 2021. I was trying to report it from August. They're saying that I reported it in fucking April 2022. Now everyone knows you can go back even through the uploads and the videos and the fucking and it shows that I was reporting it. And they wouldn't take the fucking statement. And what was happening, I was going up. I went up in August and there was a detective involved. And unless I dropped the name of a certain high profile person in Waterford who was involved, they wouldn't take the statement, if I'm being honest with you, right? So this is what happened. So then again, I went back up in September, there was another appointment made, and there's all letters to prove all this happened, right? And the same happened again, I ended up leaving the station again, with no statement being made, and I felt so uneasy, I said, will you turn on the cameras that I wanted it to be recorded? And they wouldn't turn on the cameras, but they wouldn't let me mention such and such a person's fucking name. So this happened in September. Then in October, then we all know how they said this is the same detective traded that fucking summons with the people who had assaulted me, breaching my GDPR rights. So this was the same detective all three times. Now I was reporting this assault, fucking there's loads of paperwork about it. So eventually then um he was taken off the case, if I'm being honest with you, because I was pushing the superintendent, like what action has been taken? There's a serious breach of conduct here. So the superintendent in February 2022 eventually reported the situation to GSOC and I got a letter of confirmation from the superintendent saying he had done this and like he was moved off the case and all this. So this was February 2022 and in an effort to undermine my case then the same fucking detective tried to contact me in March 2022. Now had I met him it would have undermined my whole fucking complaint and all my issues and that was the real reason about that. So I wrote a letter again to the superintendent and I outlined the conflict of interest here. So he disappeared. There was another detective put on the case and he ended up taking the statement in April 2022. But I was trying to make that statement and many of you will know this because there was videos and there's letters and kind of like there's lots of evidence to show that I was reporting this assault non-fucking-stop. Do you know what I mean? Uh, the, the phone call then Thursday the 11th of August. I'm going to transfer that phone call I can't play it because apparently it'll be breaking data protection laws and GDPR rights but I'm going to transcribe it and I'm going to explain the phone call I'm just going to read it out so that that way I can't add words to it or I can't embellish the truth and it just you can just make make up your own mind basically on what's being said here but the detective said that he sent the file off there two weeks ago so it'd be two and a half weeks ago there now but two months ago this person who assaulted me he threatened my mother-in-law down Spring Garden, a statement was made and he threatened her. He said the same would be done to you as that John fella, officer referring to me and the assault. Now, so there you, you have him linking himself to the assault. So there's loads of evidence the thing was reported. They're trying to say now that all nine cameras between where it happened, where it started, because it started by, up by McDonald's and Cork Road and it finished by Valley Baker's Belong Car Chase. And all nine cameras was after being overwritten. So they're saying there's no evidence and my sister wouldn't make a statement. Like it's all basically covered up. But it's after being reported, as we all know. And it's all after being covered up. And I predicted all of this that there was always the risk that if you fucking. There was always the risk 
if he was pushed enough that he'd turn around he'd simply say should it was you that put us up to it or there was such and such a person behind it and that was always the risk and I always said that that was going to be an issue like and I was right and that detective who swapped the fucking summons he was the same detective the three times that I went up for the statement that I, I actually made three complaints about him regarding that. I was telling them issues regarding the uh, uh, family stuff. I wanted any information or any stuff like that. And it was just family stuff. But I noticed the more I was telling them, the more it was being done the very next fucking day. So I was beginning to really get suspicious of this detective. And rightly so, then he swapped that summons and then he tried to contact me. So there's numerous issues with this, but like it's it's all the same detective. And now they're trying to say that I only reported it in April 2022. That's completely not the bullshit. Everyone knows that I was, I, like, everyone knows I've been complaining about this since fucking August 2021. You'll all be aware of the videos and the statements I put up and all this. And they don't want to, like, investigate it. They waited until they could get rid of the evidence. If I'm being honest with you, and that's what's had to happen over the potential of who he might implicate so why should I be expected to deal with the wrong doing the guard so why should so why should I be expected to deal now with the fucking ineptness of this detective who basically fucked up the whole investigation and I'm left now to carry the can while they try and cover it all up the majority of people following this will be aware I've uploaded videos since August and I've posted letters to the superintendent since August 2021. So to try and pass off, I only reported this in April 2022. Like, it's ridiculous, being honest with you. It simply supports my case in the failure of duty of care by water for Garda again. Simply go back to all the correspondence that I sent up to the superintendent and it shows that I wanted this investigated. And I was reporting it and I was also reporting this detective multiple times who I turned out to be right about. But here you have Waterford Garrity protecting this person who had assaulted me for whatever reason, feeling that they must protect him. As I said, it's about protecting the other people around him. It's not really about protecting him, it's, pre it's about protecting what he might say. And we all know that. As I had said at the time, this detective dealing with him around the assault, which we all know. As I said at the time, when that detective swapped that summons with him in an effort to kind of threaten me, it was a veiled threat, and I knew further down the line like that was such a... As I said at the time, in October, when that detective swapped that summons, When I said in October, when that detective produced that fucking summons, which was like 23 months old, it was well out of date now, and I wasn't on the system because it was at the anime license. I explained all this in previous videos, so I won't keep going on about it. But by him doing that, it empowered these people to think that, like, now that they have fucking, they have a detective or they have the guards, and they have, like, the potential to have other high-profile people, because they were going around boasting that they were helping out these people. So, like, they basically empowered local criminals that were investigated by cab so like that was just a major fuck up the phone call the phone call I, the phone call I received the phone call I made fuck the phone call I made uh, Thursday the 11th it's 17 minutes long and I'm going to transcribe the phone call and as I said, like, I can't embellish the truth and I can't add to it and I can't take to it. But I can't play the phone call, unfortunately. But I'm going to, like, speak. I'll just, I'll just explain as I go the phone call and what was said in the phone call. And I'll point out then the holes and what's been said by the detective in an effort to try and fucking play down what happened. And whereas I understand the detective did probably only get the case in April. Like, I don't accept that I only reported it in April. Like, go back to the fucking messages. Go back to the statements. Go back to the videos. It shows clearly that I was reporting it. And why should I be made now, like, I be made now fucking, like, get the shitty end of the stick for all the world? Because that detective fucked up the investigation. 
in the phone call I actually get kind of worked up towards the end of it so I am kind of cursing a lot at the detective if I'm being honest with you so you'll have to kind of try and excuse that when you have someone kind of lying to you on the phone like that and trying to like the couple of lies he told me on the phone but I was recording the phone call but he didn't know that but then he tried to backtrack and say that he didn't say that so obviously I said basically you fucking did say that so I'll transcribe that phone call in the next video and I'll read it out I will continue to explain the actions from 2017 onwards as this needs to really be spoken about and it needs to get out. I'm obviously not happy about having to go about this way, about having to talk about me family and fucking to talk about this situation. I'm not comfortable talking on camera, I've been honest with you. And you probably like know that anyway. But it's a case of having to do what needs doing and I will do what needs doing. And I won't be fucking bullied or intimidated by anyone. And it's not a bravado thing. And it's not a revenge thing. It's about standing my ground for the right reasons. So yet again there now. We have more corruption. And more bullshit there now. And an effort now to kind of like. Suppress and not investigate stuff. And it's just usual shit. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'll transcribe the phone call. And I'll find my next video. And then I'll get back to speaking about the involvement of Water City Council. And what they're trying to cover up i.e. getting caught searching my mother's bedroom too with the workers and I'll name these people out and this is my family would prefer if I just left it because they're trying to say that I'm being disrespectful to my mother when in fact like they don't want their own lives kind of they don't want the hassle of having to deal with it in their own lives from being honest with you so it's easier to lab label me so it's easier to label me as being disrespectful because they don't have a pair of balls to defend what they should be defending. So I leave it at that. I'll try to speak more clearer. Thanks for listening.